1989, 18th of June. Yeah. Possibly this was the first 100% literate town in the world. Possibly the only city in the world, maybe other than Vatican, because Vatican only has the Pope and priests and nuns. Even New York City has got 15% illiteracy. So possibly the first 100% literate town in the world in 1989. And who was the collector? Of course, I. Otherwise, why should I talk about it? <laughs> Isn't it? Who did it? I had no I. I'm just a catalyst, okay? I'm just an instrument. 13,000 volunteers, out of which 12,000 were women, girls. I won't even say senior women, girls. They came forward and they did it in Kotaim. They made us proud. Historical thing happening in Kotaim. Girls. Give up their sleep. Coming and teaching at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Early morning. They gave up their dreams. Coming to teach at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. Because most of the men would be drunk in the evening. So you couldn't teach them. So you had to wake them up in the morning to teach. See? You got to be practical. Willing to give up their dreams in the morning. And come and teach. Kotaim became a miracle town. We also achieved a quality of health index in Kotaim district. Better than the United States of America. We all admire the US. We achieved a quality of health index better than the US in Kotaim district. 1990. We done crazy things. We built a cancer hospital in Kotaim. With contribution from the public. Not one rupee from the, from the, from the government. You know how many people contributed? 82 lakh people, 8.2 million people contributed. <laughs> we done a lot of crazy things. You can go to my website. That's why I said my book, my autobiography was published by Penguin in 1996. It's a free download on my website. You will never get a free download, isn't it? My book is a free download. It's a best-selling book. In fact, it's the largest selling book in Malayalam, 13th edition, DC Books. Anybody from Kerala can buy it from DC Books. But the English is a free download. Hindi Walas. It's a Vani Prakashan book. Badlavam Keliye. Buy it and read it. Okay, but English is free download. Go to my website, free download. You will see the crazy things we have done in court. I have done a lot of crazy things. Life is about being crazy. Is or not? Being able to say, when everybody says, this is not possible. You put your hands up and says, sorry. This is possible. Yeah, it's possible. I always say, no, nah, it's possible. We can do it. So, after court time, I told you I was sent off to Delhi. I was supposed to as Commissioner Delhi Development Authority, the biggest development authority in the world. Everybody says, I was the first South Indian Commissioner in Delhi. Everybody says, ah, this Madrasi, he can't do anything. He has no political clout. He doesn't know the language. He is a Christian. He can't do anything. I said, okay, let me try. DDA owns about 1,25,000 acres of land in Delhi. When I did the survey, I found about 10,000 acres was encroached. And who are the encroachers? All politicians. And the top 10 encroachers were the biggest politicians of Delhi. And number one on the list was HKL Bhagat, the president of the Congress party in Delhi, a former minister, and more than that, in 1984, after Indira Gandhi was assassinated, 6,506 Sardarjis were burned alive in Delhi. This man was responsible for burning them alive. HKL Bhagat. He is number one on the list. I said, he is my target. I had 36,000 employees in the DDA and they were all shocked, sir. You can't touch him because if you touch him, he will burn you and your family alive by tomorrow evening. My dear kids, this is where you need your backbone. I said, sorry, I have a very simple rule. If you implement the law, catch the biggest culprit, biggest criminal first. Yes or no? Not the poorest guy. He pickpockets 10 rupees and he goes to jail and there is nobody to bail him out. He will die in jail for 10 rupees. I said, catch the biggest guy, not the smallest guys. All the biggest guys are out there. Some of them in the cabinet. Ministers, senior officers. Sorry, catch the biggest guy first. So, what is the next step? You decide to demolish its scale bath. You know what was the size of the building he built up on the encroached land? 200,000 square feet. 2 lakh square feet. That's the size of the building. 
So what is the next step? Tell me. I decide to demolish. What is the next step? No, I don't give orders to anybody. I am the one who, who decide. I am the one who I do it. I don't issue orders to somebody and say go and do it. Sorry, no. I do it myself. Now, what's the next step? Hmm? Go and demolish the building. No, there is something else. Now, this is where you people miss out on something. Tell me somebody. What's the next step? List the make of his ill deeds. No, what do I do with his list of his ill deeds? I'm just interested in demolishing this building. As of now. Catch over love of the bulldozer. Yeah, now you're coming to something. Pardon? Um, okay, part of it. Pardon? Take the bulldozer and demolish? No. If I just take the bulldozer and demolish, he will burn me alive. Hmm? No, second step is... Yeah. Yeah, so what all you are saying is now, sit down, very good, all this is part of that, this is called planning, yes or no? This is what is missing from most of your plans. You decide to do something, you say I want to be a topper, now what is the next thing you do? No, you don't do it, what you do is you go to your desk, you pull out the first test book on your desk and you start studying. Sorry, no. When I decided I was going to be a topper for the IAS examination, I had only nine months of study. I divided the next post planning. I divided the nine months into two segments. Six months of study, three months for revision. In the first six months, time, I made a timetable for six months. What time I get up in the morning? How many minutes to brush my teeth? How many minutes for my morning coffee? How many minutes for my morning jog? How many minutes for my breakfast? How many minutes for my bath? When am I going to sit down to study? Nine o'clock? Next two hours study, sorry, just not study. Which subject, sorry, no. Which chapter? Sociology, chapter one to three, nine o'clock to eleven o'clock. In six months timetable, I put the entire syllabus into my timetable. What do you people do? I want to be a topper. You go and sit in your desk, pull out the first test book right on top. When the examination comes, to, what happens? Oh my God, I have 10 more chapters to finish. I have one more book to finish. Why? Because you don't do the planning, yes or not? Isn't it? Sorry. Next step after I decide to demolish HK Bhagat is a planning. I am going to demolish the biggest criminal in Delhi, 200,000 square feet. So I take thing, 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 thing for hours together, day together. Then I take a paper and a pen and I put it down. 10,000 policemen with guns in open trucks. No lathis. I want him and the world to see there is a police force with guns, not lathis, who are willing to shoot force. Yes or not? In front of that, 25 bulldozers, not these tiny ones, massive bulldozers. In front of that, me and my dog, my four foot tall dog, Great Dane, in an open jeep. Me not like this. My Stetson hat. Have you seen the cowboys? Clint Eastwood. My Stetson hat. My jeans. My two guns. One gun here in my hip. One in my boots. Okay. How's that? Good scene? I'm in the open jeep. I'm leading. Behind me is 25 bulldozers. Behind that is 10,000 policemen. We land in Model Town at 5.30 in the morning. Everybody runs away. They thought Pakistan had invaded India. Yeah. Over the next 36 hours, we demolish, we reduce to powder this, 30, this 200,000 square feet building, we reduce it to powder. <laughs> that day is even in news, television, and next day's newspaper says the demolition man comes to Delhi. Me and my dog. I was a little jealous because this dog looks very handsome. <laughs> yes. Nobody has ever told me I look handsome, not even my wife. I've tried to persuade her so many times to tell me, to tell me at least once that I look handsome. <laughs> Never. I've tried to bribe her so many times with so many things, including diamonds.